All right, so we're going to continue on uh, muscles. So this slide is about the control of muscles by the, by the nervous system. And we have covered this previously um, for the T6 video, but I know the, the sound wasn't very good. So let me just kind of go over this real quick. So normally you would have some motor neurons. Motor neurons control skeletal muscles. So the motor neurons can have a very, very, very long axons. Okay. So this is the axon from one motor neuron. So let's say the, the motor neuron is located in the brain, right? So let's say that's one motor neuron. And then uh, I know the shape is not correct, but I really can't draw the shape of a neuron. It's a very complicated shape and uh, apparently I can't do it. So just imagine that, you know, you have a dendrite on one side and then the other side, this is the uh, axon, right? The, the big tail of the neuron. So the axon can, you know, extend quite far away, um, all the way to the muscle fibers that the motor neuron controls. And a lot of times each motor neuron can control multiple muscle fibers. And you can see, right, this is kind of almost the end of the axon and it splits, right, to different axon terminals. So that's one axon terminal and that's another axon terminal. So this is how one motor neuron can control multiple muscle cells. Muscle cells are also known as muscle fibers. Okay, now if you look at this part very closely, uh, if you remember, that's called a synapse, right? And that's the location where the axon terminal can release neurotransmitters, right? For example, acetylcholine is what a motor neuron axon terminal can release. And then the acetylcholine diffuses through the synaptic cleft, which is the space between the axon terminal and the muscle fiber. So there's a little space there you just can't see. Acetylcholine moves through the space and it binds to the receptors on the muscle fiber. And then once the binding happens, it will trigger a series of uh, reactions and that's going to lead to muscle contraction. So this is how the nervous system controls muscle cells, really, you know, through electrical signals, right, which are transmitted through the axons. And then when it gets to the axon terminals, it's going to be switched to chemical signals, right, which are neurotransmitters. The uh, synapse is also known as the neuromuscular junctions, right, that's more specific to uh, muscle cells. Okay, now practice question. Okay, so we just mentioned this, right? The synaptic connection between the terminal and a motor nerve and a muscle is neuromuscular junction, right? This is where a motor neuron can exert control over a muscle fiber. Now over here, a motor nerve, it really just means the axon of a motor neuron, right? Because the nerves are just bundles of axons. Okay, next topic is about the gross anatomy of skeletal muscles. Now, I was a little bit surprised to see that ATI added this particular topic to T7. Now, this can be pretty hard because ATI did list, you know, quite a few muscles. So you need to know where those muscles are located, you know, their names, and just kind of in general what they do. I really can't see ATI asking you very kind of in-depth questions about what the muscles do. So for example, does this muscle flex you know, the, the knee or does this muscle extend the knee or does this muscle flex the forearm or abduct the arm? That can be quite hard. So uh, based on very limited information, uh, basically one question in T7, the question is about the location of a particular muscle. So that wouldn't be too bad, right? I think it's uh, doable, right, to remember where those muscles are located. 
But when you add specific functions, that can be very, very challenging. But hopefully ATI will only ask you about information regarding the, the names and locations of the muscles. Okay. All right. So I found some good um, diagrams listing all the major muscles. And again, here's the list from ATI. So we're just going to go over real quick where the muscles are located. And during this process, I would ask you to, um, if you can, you know, touch your body and try to locate the muscles on your own body. This will really kind of help you uh, remember uh, the locations. Okay, temporalis uh, in that temporal bone area. So it's gonna kind of be on the side over here. So it's kind of like a fan-shaped muscle kind of covering the temporal bone. So if you know where the temporal bone is, you kind of know where this muscle is located. Uh, it's really kind of on the lateral side of the skull and it's involved in mastication, which is chewing. So this muscle allows you to kind of elevate and retract your jaw, right, so that you can chew. All right, next one is orbicularis oculi. So this is the muscle around your eye. So it allows you to blink, right, to um, close your eyelids. So that's what that muscle does. And then the next one is called the sternocleidal mastoid. I know that's a very long name, and it's based on the, um, where the, the muscle is attached to, the origin and the insertion. Okay. So this muscle is right here. Now, if you flex your neck, kind of look down, kind of do the nodding action, look down, you can feel that muscle contracting. And also when you turn to the side, when you turn your head to the side, you also use that muscle. So if you put your hand on the neck and then when you do all those actions, you can feel this muscle contracting. Okay, next one, uh, trapezius. It's gonna be mostly on the back. Um, so there's a little bit trapezius here, but I'm gonna talk about this muscle when we get to the posterior, posterior view of the body. Our next one is deltoid. So it's this kind of shoulder muscle. Okay, so this is a muscle that's pretty easy to remember. Most students do not have any trouble with deltoid muscle. Okay, next one is pectoralis major. So it's this big muscle on the chest, right? When you move your arm, you can definitely feel this muscle contracting, right? Like if you flex or uh, adduct your arm, or rotate your arm at the shoulder, put your muscle on the chest. You can see this muscle gets hard because it's contracting. And then the next two, rhomboid and latissimus dorsi, those muscles are on the back. So we're going to talk about that on the next slide. Okay, next two, those are the two muscles that most people are very familiar with, right? Especially if you work out a lot. So bicep, biceps, Brachii, that's the muscle over here. And when you flex your elbow, right, you can feel that muscle getting really big or really hard. Triceps, brachii, tri uh, they're going to be on the posterior of the upper arm, right? You know where it is. Okay, next one, rectus abdominis. So that's going to be your six pack, right, over here. So that's uh, a very kind of sexy muscle, right? Uh, a lot of people, they do a lot of abs work, right? To get really uh, big rectus abdominis muscle. Okay, serratus so anterior. So that's the muscles over here, kind of covers uh, the ribs. So that's where this muscle is located. Now, normally it's not a very, very important muscle. So I'm kind of uh, surprised to see this muscle on the list. External oblique, so that's going to be the muscle on the side over here. Some of the ab work also has movement so that you can use your external oblique. All right, and then the next muscle group, these are the muscles that are located on the buttocks or on the thigh. So we're going to look at gracilis because this is something that we can see over here. So it's kind of on the inner side of your thigh. And then you're gonna have three muscles. These are collectively called the quad. Okay, so you're gonna have rectus femoris kind of in the middle. The one on the lateral side, as you can guess, is vectus lateralis. And then the one on the medial side of the thigh is called vastus medialis. Okay, so that's your quad muscles. 
Now you may wonder quad, that means four muscles, right? So there is a fourth muscle, but it's deep to these three, which is why it's not shown here. And since ATI does not list this muscle, I'm not gonna talk about it. I don't wanna overload you with you know, information. Okay, next one, tibialis anterior. So that's a major muscle on the lower leg. So that's the muscle on the anterior side of the lower leg. Gastric anemias, that's the calf muscle. And it's gonna be on the back of the lower leg. Okay. Um, and then soleus is going to be over here. So you can see soleus. And soleus is right next to gastric anemias. So um, on this diagram, they can't really differentiate those two. So that's why there's only one line. It points to both muscles. Okay. Now let's look at the posterior view and go over the rest of the muscles. So trapezius is right here. It's this diamond shape muscle. So it's involved in uh, neck movement, shoulder movement. So it's a pretty big and important muscle. Uh, rhomboid is over here, kind of deep to trapezius muscle. So you can see it's over here. But usually, you know, if you have trapezius on the right side, it will cover rhomboids. Okay. So that's why on this side that they're showing deep muscles. So the, the deep muscles are usually covered by superficial muscles. Okay. Now, if you go down the back on the lower back, you're going to have latissimus dorsi, right, which is also a very, very big muscle. And if you hear people say my lats, right, that refers to latissimus dorsi. Okay, triceps, and then the major muscles of the buttocks, right, the biggest one is going to be gluteus maximus, so right? that's your buttock. And then much smaller and more superior, that's gluteus uh, medius right here. Here, so you can see gastric anemias. So this is dissected, meaning they uh, remove that muscle because gastric anemias is superficial muscle. So it's removed on this diagram to show the deep muscle underneath. Okay, so gastric anemias is over here and soleus is deep to gastric anemias. Okay. And again, gastric anemias is the calf muscle. Okay, I think we went over everything. So I hope you're ready to practice a little bit. Okay, first practice question. Okay, I have mentioned this a couple of times. So the calf muscle is gastric anemias. D is the correct answer. Next one. Which of the following muscles are located on the anterior thigh? So this asks you about quadriceps, right? That four major muscles on the anterior thigh. Now remember the, the fourth one is a deep muscle. We can't really see it very easily. So for T's, uh, we're just gonna try to remember the other three superficial, very big muscles. So these are gonna be rectus femoris, that's right in the middle. And then you have vastus lateralis on the lateral side and vastus medialis on the medial side. Now, what is this one? Biceps femoris is gonna be on the posterior of the thigh. It's one of the hamstring muscles. All right, next question. A common site for the intramuscular injection in the upper arm is this muscle. Most of us probably have gotten either the flu shot or COVID shot or some kind of other shots in the arm, right? And it's intramuscular, meaning it's gonna go into the muscle. So this muscle is the deltoid muscle. All right, that's the end of this lesson. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.